well, uh, I'm going to get this tender finished up, but I thought I might start uh, off by just showing again a few things that uh, I use when I'm working on projects like this. Um, as I've mentioned in the last video, there's three different Dremel fittings. This is a Scotch-Brite type uh, abrasive, but it's a very soft abrasive and that works good for removing uh, carbon buildup on wheels and uh, uh, electric low contact surfaces. Then I've got a series of these little wire brushes. This one happens to be steel. I have both steel and brass. Uh, they do nice for burnishing metal, uh, which just means it polishes it up. Then I also have a cleaning cloth and a bunch, again, a bunch of these. Um, and then I finally will use good old fashioned Q-tips um, and some alcohol and you want to get the highest percentage of alcohol that you can uh, because it'll have the most power to it. I've noticed recently that Walmart and other places are selling 70% alcohol and I don't know why you'd mess with it with that uh, low alcohol content. And then this stuff here is a lightweight oil or grease I apologize that I use, uh, Molly Coat. Um, again it's uh, food grade and uh, and is resistant to all kinds of uh, corrosion and whatnot. And so this is what I use on uh, all of my model engines uh, when I'm putting them back together. So uh, that's a little bit to get us started. And without further ado, uh, we will get this party rolling. Um, okay, so the first thing I wanna do is, uh, now that we've worked on the engine here, and this has been cleaned, uh, lubricated, We've got the baffle repaired, uh, I've got the wiring done. So now I'm going to turn my attention to uh, the frames and the wheels. Now um, this brought up a, su a subject that I thought would be interesting because I'm guessing most of you like me probably did not know this was the case. Um, but here as I mentioned earlier we've got uh, steel wheels and brass. Steel, brass. So somebody uh, change these out. I don't know why um, and it's unfortunate because the brass wheels resist corrosion or I should say carbon buildup better than the steel do um, and so typically you see steel on lighted cars on cabooses but then you see the brass pickup wheels on tenders so I thought well I need to try and change those out and then I recalled oh wait I do have a scrap tender that has brass uh, pickup wheels on it but then I remembered, oh wait a minute, uh, wheels come in different shank lengths or axle lengths. And uh, so I thought this might be something worth sharing with the rest of you. Because um, this is something that a, a collector told me about not too long ago when I asked to buy some wheels. And if you look at the truck spacing here, um, again, you can see they're, they're, you know, that's the distance. This is a newer, um, later model American Flyer tender that I wanted to replace and if I hold these up together you can see how further out the trucks are and that means that the axles are also going to be longer. Moral of the story is these will not work in here. <laughs> so um, just keep that in mind uh, and I was told by this collector that he believed there's actually three different lengths of uh, wheels uh, that, that Flyer, Flyer use. So um, I don't know if that's the case or not, but uh, since he knows more than I do, I can, can say that's what I was told. All right, so uh, first thing I wanna do is actually with these metal frames, side frames, they're kinda nice because they're fairly simple to just bend out a little bit like that. And uh, then once you've got a little room in there, you can kinda pry the, uh, the wheels out and they come out really easy like that. <laughs> Hmm. I don't usually come out that hard, but uh, that one did. So what I'm going to do is take these wheels out. Oh, and that's interesting. Again, I don't know if you can see this. The reason the silver one or the steel ones came out is their axles are a little bit too long. <laughs> so, um, wow. I will have to see if I have any of the short steel wheels here. Ah, fortunately I do. Okay, so yeah, so I guess that's a, a lesson learned there. Um, 
be leery of uh, your axle lengths. So um, anyhow, what I was saying is I take these things apart here. I want to clean out the insides of the trucks. So you can see there's some rust here. I also want to burnish up the copper contact surfaces as well as the axles of the wheel sets. Uh, just clean everything just as clean as I can because of course that improves conductivity. And then I put a little dab of grease on the insides here and I squeeze the truck back together. I also take a look at has it been bent sometimes um, and not so much with this style of truck but with the centered frame, the, the heavier gauge um, cast frames. Sometimes I've seen those trucks where I don't know if the engines or cars have been dropped at some point but they kind of get twisted and warped. So sometimes you want to you want to make some adjustments. But I just wanted to kind of, while the video is at slow speed, give you a rundown of what I'm going to do. It'll be fast paced now because obviously this is pretty tedious, but uh, enjoy. Thanks for sticking with uh, with this series so far. I anticipate that the engine will be probably three parts as well. And uh, there are some really interesting things that I found with that engine. So please uh, stick around and, and come back. Um, and I also anticipate the spacing between each release to be about uh, a week. Uh, so just keep that in mind. All right, um, as far as these wheels go, uh, I don't want to diss the steel pickup wheels too much because what I have discovered is since I started doing this burnishing which again is is using some sort of a steel brush uh, on on the metal surfaces and creating this super high polish that they actually do a very nice job of resisting buildup so if you're someone that has uh, cabooses or light cars or other cars that have the steel pickup wheels consider that passenger cars too Consider burnishing them because it, it, it's worthwhile doing. Uh, it's a little bit of a hassle to do, I, I get that, but it'll reduce uh, the frequency with which you need to clean wheels and um, help resist the buildup. So it's, it's really a good investment. Um, all right, a couple other things that I wanted to mention here. Um, when I was trying to remove that blob of solder from the top of the smoke unit, uh, I applied a little bit of solder on the tip of my soldering iron as I started to heat that up. And what happens is if you have an existing chunk of solder, especially if it's on metal, which will again remove heat or siphon heat away, adding that little bit of fresh solder helps to liquefy it more quickly. Then on top of that, I have a device that removes solder. And it's a plunger type thing, um, you, you press the spring down, and when you've got some liquid solder you need to remove, you put the tip down, press the button, and it siphons it away. It's a plastic thing, it's blue, it's about 10 inches long. Uh, I, for the life of me, can't remember where, I've, where I got it because I've had it for years and years and years. Um, and periodically you open it up and empty out the uh, solder and it looks like uh, little flat pancakes. <laughs> so um, anyhow, kind of modern science marvel there that it's plastic and you're sucking up this molten solder and it doesn't melt there, ruin the inside. So something kind of neat and worthwhile. Um, another thing that I thought I would, would share is in a little bit here, I'm going to put the shell on the tender. And as I did that, I realized, wait a minute, there's something in the way. And here it was the new blob of solder that I created when I affixed those three wires. And I didn't want to have a new blob, but because those wires were so difficult, they had the old solder, and I really wasn't interested in replacing everything. Uh, that's just the way it was. Plus, the resistance from that blob was pretty minor. So what I did is I put black tape uh, over the uh, solder to prevent shorts, and I did two layers of that, and then went ahead and put things back together. And it made such a small difference that it really was negligible. 
When I flip the tender over, you probably will see me using a needle nose pliers to hold my new screws that I got. That's another trick that I found pretty helpful uh, when you have short stubby fingers like I do and you're using um, small screws. It helps me to hold the screw with one hand and then get it get the thread started. And then obviously you've got to remove the pliers so you can tighten the screw down. So just a couple tricks that uh, have worked for me. Feel free to use them. There's no copyright on those. But if you want to send royalties my way, I certainly won't turn those down. Thanks again for tuning in to Austin's American Flyer video. I hope you've enjoyed this series. And as I mentioned before, T minus seven days and we'll get the next uh, release out there. Enjoy your American Flyer trains.